Today we're checking out LG's SL9YG 4.1.2 channel Dolby Atmos soundbar with Meridian technology. There's a lot going on with this bar. It's got Google Assistant, Chromecast streaming, multi-room audio, high resolution audio, and of course Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. So let's check it out. Let's start out with the design. Now there's no doubt this is a massive soundbar. It is about 48 inches across, over five inches deep, but it's only about two inches high. So that makes it easy to set beneath your television as long as you've got the room for it on your TV console. And we like the look of it too. It's got this brushed metal finish, which is really nice. Very clean look, and that follows with the subwoofer as well. It's got that sort of brushed metal look on that top panel. Now, as we mentioned, this is a 4.1.2 channel soundbar, and that means that there's actually no center channel. It's very odd. You're not gonna see that with many bars. And there's also no rear surrounds. So we'll get to the center channel in a second, but as far as the rear surrounds, this is sort of designed to immerse you in audio without having to put some back channel speakers. Maybe you don't wanna mount them, maybe you think they are going to mess up your room and not look very good. So this is supposed to offer you a lot of immersion without having to do that. And because it needs to get that rear surround action, it's got actually side mounted channels here. It's got the two height channels up here and then it's got stereo channels on the front. Now you can also add some rear surrounds from LG and that's about $180, $200 to add those. They've got their own amp, but they do not have a firing driver. So all you're gonna get for that 0.2 for the height channels of Dolby Atmos is these two drivers. Now there's another weird thing about this. We said there's no center channel. There's a good reason for that. And that's because when you mount the soundbar, if you wanna mount it, you actually mount it in a different orientation. Now bear with me because this is odd. We saw this at CES. I still think it's weird and I didn't get a chance to actually mount it here. I just used it in the regular position. But if you do want to mount it, it's got a gyroscope inside which is going to change the orientation. So you'll mount it like this. The height speakers then become the front speakers. The rear surrounds, which are again side mounted for the rear surround channels, they're going to stay the same. But the front channels are going to become the height speakers. Now. That, you may ask, how is that going to work since they're now going to be facing down at the ground? Well, LG says it's designed to do basically a double bounce. Now with regular height channels, you're gonna get one bounce. They're going to bounce on the ceiling and come down. And the idea is the sound will sound like it's coming from the ceiling once it bounces off. For this orientation, for the mounted orientation, these speakers are going to bounce down to the ground, then bounce at the ceiling and then hit your ears. That might work out all right with a hardwood floor, but with carpet, we're wondering if it's really going to be the kind of overhead immersion that you want from your Dolby Atmos or DTSX sound sources. So honestly, we suggest if you're going in for the Dolby Atmos sound to probably leave it in its regular orientation. That said, there is a ton of power packed into this thing. There's 500 total watts, including 220 just for the subwoofer. And let me tell you, that thing gets loud. And then 280 spread between the front channels, the height channels, and those side mounted surround channels. So a lot of power. And if you've got it set up in the right room, it also gives you a lot of immersion for just a two piece system. Setup is a relatively simple affair. You'll want to use the HDMI TV ARC input. Now that is the easiest, simplest way, and it's also the only way to source Dolby Atmos straight from your TV, but you'll have to provide your own high-speed HDMI cable. It doesn't come in the package. Now, if you don't have HDMI ARC, you can connect through optical, but you'll probably want a TV that does have that. There's also an HDMI input here for connecting a Blu-ray player or a gaming console directly, and that allows for 4K HDR pass-through. You can also connect a USB drive for high resolution audio files at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. A nice inclusion there, especially if you have a nice collection of high resolution files. You can actually control the folders right from your remote. Although, you know, you have to check certain drives won't be compatible, but you can definitely use a USB flash drive. One thing you won't get though is an analog input. There's just no analog input on this. We're starting to see that more and more. So we like the USB, but it would be nice to have an analog input for your legacy audio device is like a vinyl player. If you want to connect something like that, you will need an adapter. One thing we did have a little bit of trouble with was connecting the system to our Wi-Fi network through the Google Home app. Now it's a pretty simple process, but for some reason it got tripped up in there and totally froze when it was trying to add a firmware update. I ended up just powering the bar down and back up again, and then it somehow just connected on its own, but it's something to be aware of, and it's definitely not as simple and easy as say a Sonos setup. Now once you've connected the system, you'll be able to use multi-room audio with other Google speakers through the Google Home app, as well as of course Google Assistant.
Ethan. And that allows you to control playback on your streaming services like Google Play Music and Spotify, although not Apple Music, of course. You can do that while you're streaming just by saying, hey Google, or you can press the assistant button here and there's a mic right on the remote. And of course, you can also ask other queries when you're connected to the internet, uh, like what's the weather, you can check your calendar, all the stuff that Google Assistant does, or, or a good portion of it anyway. Now when it comes to controls, there's a nice clean LED display up front that tells you exactly what's going on, so it's pretty easy to see what you're doing when it comes to switching sound sources, volume, and all of that kind of stuff. But it is a little quirky on the remote. One of the quirkiest, weirdest things is the F button, which is actually the function key, but it really changes the sources. Uh, you'll also have to learn what LG is talking about when it comes to changing the levels of the channels. You can do that through the EQ button here, uh, but the channels are sort of designated with weird acronyms. OVC means overhead channels instead of height. Uh, you've got uh, WF for the woofer instead of just subwoofer or SW and then side channels, which are the surrounds in this case, that's an easy one. And of course there's also the R if you do connect some actual discrete rear surrounds. So you'll have to learn the system. Another odd thing about it is there are several sound modes and there's one called ASC, which is adaptive sound control. It's supposed to adapt to the source, but we didn't really see much going or hear much going on there. So we ended up using the standard mode for most stuff and then the movie mode. But the movie mode is a lot lo louder than the standard mode. So that's another sort of quirk of the system. One quick aside here, if you're using a Dolby Atmos or DTS-X source, you won't be able to use the sound effects at all. It just sends the source straight through. When it comes to performance, as I sort of referenced earlier, this bar does a really nice job of immersion for just a two-piece system, just the subwoofer and the singular bar. Now the SL9 really responds to what kind of source you feed it. It sounds fine with a sitcom or a stereo channel input, but it really revs things up when you give it a Dolby Atmos source. Uh, one of our favorite demos, Amaze, I plugged that one in and I was really impressed how much immersion this thing got around the room. It didn't quite get all the way to the back, but there's a scene where the bird is flying around you and it got really close. It stopped right at the back of my head. It also did a really good job with the thunder. It was powerful and potent from that massive subwoofer. And when the rain came down, it really felt like it was coming from overhead. So I was really impressed with that. Again, you can add the rear surrounds, but if you just want a two piece system, it does a pretty good job with that. It was also great with the details of Chernobyl. If you've been watching that series, you know how great it is. It also has great sound mixing. So it does a really good job with that dialogue. Now, occasionally dialogue can get a little bit muffled if there's a lot going on. And that's probably because there's no center channel but overall it does quite well with high-end sources. Even Skyfall, we did a, a 5.1 channel check with that one. It sounded fantastic. One thing the Bard doesn't do as well with is music streaming, especially for more organic music and high-end percussion. It just seemed to have some trouble with the cymbals for some reason, almost as if I was feeding it a poor quality MP3. It did well with other music, but these cinematic bars aren't really primarily made for playing back music, so it's something to be aware of, especially when it costs $1,000. Now $1,000 is a serious investment for a sound bar, especially when you can go to Vizio and get a 5.1.4 channel bar for that same money. However, if you're looking for Atmos immersion and serious power in just a two-piece system, LG's SL9YG is definitely worth a look. Now, thank you for watching this video. If you like what you've seen here, go ahead and leave us a comment. Maybe give us a thumbs up. You can see more videos like this one right over here, and you can get all kinds of stuff by subscribing to our channel. We'd love for you to do that. Please just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want the full review of this soundbar and tons of other stuff, come to digitaltrends.com.